Good afternoon, everybody. I get the opportunity to work for Ayamu here, and it's been very blessed that I get to do something special in giving back uh, to Indonesia. Uh, I left the country when I was 16, moved out to, to the U.S. I'm only 18, so it's been two decades. <laughs> so you do the math. So um, a little bit about the, the Indonesian um, plumbing. I, I remember when we, myself and a few of colleagues of Ayatmo, when we first approached uh, plumbing, Although plumbing, you know, we took it for granted here in the U.S. When you go to oh. Indonesia, I know that some of you has been to Indonesia. I heard that uh, bread was came from Bali. A few folks here, I'm sure, have been to Jakarta and so forth. I mean, in, in some part of the country, it is, uh, you know, you have plumbing like the U.S. But when you go behind the wall, it's a bit different situation there. I've learned in Indonesia when you said about drinking water, it's really when they call potable, it's not really what we call potable in the US, it's really, when we talk about potable, it's really, it's sufficient enough for you to do cleaning for like food preparation. That's really what we call potable in Indonesia. When you said clean water, it's something that you use just to basically clean yourself, to take a shower, something in that nature. So that's something that we took it for granted. So when this opportunity comes to, to me to say, hey, Ayatmo says, let's, let's do something and, and do something for Indonesia. It was fantastic. It was, it was such a pleasure. And in fact, the Indonesian government has been very, very open and welcoming. That, that was something so fortunate. So um, without further ado, I mean, we all talk about how the, um, the uh, standardization in different countries is pretty similar. In Indonesia, we have, I know it's a bit small, it's a, it's a, a I test. <laughs> We have BSN, it's, it's similar to Standard Australia. BSN is really a government agency. Every standards in Indonesia national standard has to go to BSN. That's the Indonesian National Standardization Body. And, we, and similar to uh, Standard Australia, they don't certify, they don't test. So they have another agency, it's also another government agency, is KAN or Comité Acreditasi Nacional. That is the Indonesian National Accreditation Body. It's similar to uh, JASNs or NC or NEB in that nature. So they do, they are the one who accredit the testing laboratory and product certification bodies. Since today we're talking about plumbing, so I'm just gonna kinda keep it to the plumbing. Um, a few years back, the Indonesian government, the National Standardization Body, BSN, has approached Ayatmo. They don't really have a plumbing code. Everything over there is called uh, standards, SNI, which is Standard Nacional Indonesia. So you heard a lot, I'm talking about SNI, it's really that's, that is the plumbing code for Indonesia, SNI 8153. So when they approach us a few years back, uh, we talk um, with a lot with BSN and we get the Ministry of Public Works Indonesia involved. We understand that, you know, in every culture, we can't just take the Ayatmos Uniform Plumbing Code as is because Indonesia has a different climate than the US, has different culture. So we have many, many meetings. I remember those days. We have so many technical meetings with this, uh, the BSN as well as the ministry. We make adjustment on some of them. We did adopt a lot of the IAPMOS UPC, but we make adjustment to make it work for the local market, such as, you, I don't know if some of you have seen a squatting toilet. It is not allowed in the US, but we're making it allowed in, in Indonesia because it is customary over there. We understand that if we make it too drastic of a change, it will be very difficult because they don't really have a plumbing good prior to this, SNI 8153. So we're taking a baby steps. We, uh, and one of the things that was very crucial when we talked with BSN is that this code needs to be reevaluated and revised about three to five years. So that, that's essentially what the code is. So this is involved similar to the plumbing code of uh, the US, the Uniform Plumbing Code, or probably the the National Plumbing of Canada, except it has the Indonesian flair. Another thing that it's, uh, needs to be uh, important is here uh, with the SNI 8153, there are standards that's being referenced. The Clause 4.1, which is a lot of the local standards, very limited, I believe there's about 12 to 14 standards in there, that is an SNI. And then Annex E, which is currently is voluntary, there's about close to 200 standards. A lot of uh, the the American standards is in there, some Canadian standards is in there. One of the reasons why we include it on there as a volunteer because in order for the Indonesian government to be able to adopt 200 standards, it will take them 200 years probably to do this because of the consensus process. So what they've done is that through the meeting, we make references to the standards inside 
the, the code, the Indonesian code. And then now we talk about the authorities that make it mandatory. At the moment, the SNI 8153 is still voluntary in nature. However, there are standards within that particular code that is mandatory. So um, this is the law. They do have an Indonesian law. That's number 20, which talks about standardization and conformity assessment. It says that, it stated that the, the SNI, which is Indonesian standards, can be voluntary or mandatory. But this is very important, this next clause, the second bullet point, if it's related to safety, health, and environment, the related ministry can make it mandatory, and they can issue a decree. And they have done that on some of the building products. Plumbing is belong to the building products, but it's still a long ways to go. We're gonna talk about that a bit more. And, and, and then this is another third item, and they let the conformity assessment activities is taken by the bodies that is accredited by KEN, and it has to operate in Indonesia and has to have a legal entity. So we're happy to, to say that Ayatmo has put in a lot of effort, and we do have a legal entity in Indonesia, which is Ayatmo Group Indonesia, that is currently running and providing the service. And this is actually the cover of that plumbing good in Indonesia currently. And there are many ministry for plumbing specifically, there is a Ministry of Public Work, Ministry of Trade, and Ministry of Industry that are involved with the plumbing. Now, now we're talking a lot about, I remember uh, Dr. Grossman mentioned about issues in Australia that there is some fine, and, and Indonesia has a law as well that talks about fines. So if you falsify an SNI, you're talking about poss possibly uh, facing seven years in jails. And there is a fine, of 50 billion rupees. That's equivalent probably four and a half million US dollars if you, if you falsify SNI, that's the standards. And if you deliberately put the marks and SNI on the product packaging that is not included within your certificate, that means you're falsifying your product and you're saying that this product is certified, you're facing possibly a four years in jails and there's a fine of four billion which is 350,000 US dollar per occurrence. And then also, if you are uh, importing product um, from other country that do not have SNS certificate when it is mandatory, you're also looking at about five years jail time and a fine of 35 billion. That is about three million US dollars somewhere around that neighborhood today. So there is a pretty uh, significant on that. As I mentioned earlier, there is options for mandatory or voluntary. It's a long ways, but BSN has made a lot of um, you know, efforts and progress in the last uh, couple decades, they have issued over 8,000, 8,500 SNIs. Currently, there's about 279 SNI that is regulated, and, and we've been monitoring this, and that number keep growing. Every, you know, every day there's some regulatory decree comes in. So this is the different ministry. Ministry, ministry of Industry has issued 99 regulation covering about 103 SNIs. Most of the plumbing products belongs in the Ministry of Industry in terms of product itself. And the public works uh, control of the installation part. And some of the big um, um, uh, pipes, whatnot, that goes outside the meter, outside the building. And this is to give you an idea what are the regulated building products, uh, building materials, because plumbing belongs in the building uh, materials. Currently, there are two that are regulated that's in, in our industry, which is the water closet. So the toilet, it is uh, regulated. They must be SNI certified. And then second thing is water meter, and there are more coming. So, so far, there's about 27 building materials regulated. And when they issue a regulation of that, it's not just to talk about the product has to be meeting a standard, they also regulate the conformity assessment bodies. So even though you do, you, even though the third party is approved or accredited, they also have to be appointed by the appropriate ministry. So everything is regulated when it comes to, in Indonesia, when it comes to mandatory. <clears throat> the type of, uh, the validity of SNS certificate is also being um, regulated as well. There's a four years, three years, two years, six months, and per shipment. So in our industry, when we talk about plumbing product, it is, it is the four years, it is the type five. But as you can see, in Indonesia, there's also um, the regulation also involved whether the product comes in, uh, it's made locally or if it's imported. For example, like say, um, like the toys and baby clothes, those are something that is considered, there's a regulation. So if it's imported, they tend to do it a bit shorter time per shipment versus six months. 
that also happens on some of the uh, plumbing product that's being regulated. So the frequency, how you collect sample is also all regulated. So we talk about four years, it is a type five. I don't know if some of you are familiar with the certification scheme with the 17067. What it means with the type five is that there's not only just a testing of the product to make sure they're conforming to the standards, but they also there's a surveillance activity, which includes retesting of the product. So we may collect the samples at the factory, at the warehouse, or purchase the product and retest, retest them. We assess the factory to the management system to make sure that they are capable to produce product, not just a golden sample, but continuously, and this is going on. So there is that, that program that, that we must follow when we apply for SNS certification. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to SNI for plumbing certification, there are cert certain uh, application requirements. This is very common if some of you has been in the conformity assessment. There is an application requirement that you have to meet, but I remember, uh, um, was it Dr. Grossman that mentioned, how do you control because people faking things and they could, could uh, falsify things. Indonesia, same thing. They control them. They have to, you, if you are going to apply for SNS certification, you have to register. It. So you have to get a number from the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Industry. So that number has to be registered. So you make sure that you're legal so there's a way to trace you. So after you go through all this process, which is you submit your application, you do your testing, you pass all the qualification, we did all the audits, and at the end of the day, the, the third party certification uh, con uh, conformity bodies, such as, for example, in this case, IAPMO Indonesia, what we'll do is that, because we are appointed by the government, we have to register your information to the appropriate ministry. So this is for the purpose of the custom to make sure that when they enter the bar, it is in their system. And we have to give them a special barcode that goes into the certificate. And that is unique to, to every single certificate. So there is some control in there in terms of enforcement. If there's a lot of things in Indonesia that is still um, new for the market, however, they are making progress. I understand that they've been talking a lot with the Standard Australia, we've been working with NC, so they are taking a lot of information from other countries for best practices. So um, in a nutshell, uh, Indonesia is doing uh, its best to prevent the country for having to become a dumping for a substandard product. Um, they are, they're pushing the education factors of it, which I am was also involved. So we're not just um, giving them the knowledge but also working closely with the government, trying to also educate them about the importance of plumbing. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that maybe a decade from now we'll see a whole different thing. So I understand that every time I came to Indonesia, there's new, new construction, something new coming in. So right now the country is focusing about the infrastructure, about making things safe, and then there is already a movement uh, of making it green. So there is an entity, uh, uh, NGO, over Indonesia who was focusing for putting a green labeling. So, you know, being the fourth largest population in the world, I mean, it's about time that they, they're moving towards that. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. So that concludes my presentation.